May I send my greetings to everyone today on this Divine Mercy Sunday as we celebrate the Easter liturgy in our churches. Myself, I'm from Christ the King Parish in Liverpool, New York, and we're here to greet you this morning as we start everything of our faith. We start in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, as we present ourselves into God's glory, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Risen Lord, you bring hope to the fearful. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Risen Lord, you bring love to the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. We give glory to God by saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Lamb of the King, O God Almighty, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very reoccurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of your people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, and by the, whose spirit they have been reborn, and by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Many signs and wonders were done among the people at the hands of the apostles. They were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the others dared to join them, but the people esteemed in them. Yet more than ever, believers in the Lord, great numbers of men and women were added to them. Thus, they even carried the sick out into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, so that when Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on one or another of them. A large number of people from the towns in the vicinity of Jerusalem also gathered, bringing the sick and those disturbed by unclean spirits, and they were cured. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, your brother, who share with you the distress, the kingdom, and the endurance we have in Jesus, found myself on the island called Patmos because I proclaimed God's word and gave testimony to Jesus. I was caught up in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a voice as loud as a trumpet, which said, write on a scroll what you see. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. And when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, one like the Son of Man, wearing an ankle-length robe with a gold sash around his chest. When I caught sight of him, I fell down at his feet as though dead. He touched me with his right hand and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the one who lives. Once I was dead, but now I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and the netherworld. Write down, therefore, what you have seen and what is happening and what will happen afterwards. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you and, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his sides. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my fingers into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came through, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hand, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered him and said, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You have come to believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On the second Sunday of Easter, we read from John's Gospel. It's a Gospel filled with many expressions of honor for Jesus. Some call Jesus a great prophet. Others call him a teacher. Still others call Jesus the Christ or even the Son of God. But it was Thomas, the Apostle, who has forever been labeled the doubter, 
who first proclaimed Jesus to be my Lord and my God. Biblical scholar Father Raymond Brown says that Thomas made the most complete affirmation of Jesus' nature to be found on the lips of anyone in the Gospels, my Lord and my God. Every healing that Jesus performed, every miracle that he'd made, every teaching points to these four words. The very revelation of God's love and mercy points to who Jesus is, my Lord and my God. The story of Thomas is the story of almost every believer in the history of the church. Thomas represents each of us when we say, I find it hard to believe. But just as Jesus wanted to rejuvenate Thomas's faith, he wants to rejuvenate ours when we are caught in doubt. He wants us to be like Thomas, a people who can overcome our very human and natural doubts. He wants to help each of us say, my Lord and my God. So today and all this week, proclaim these precious words, my Lord and my God, and then watch to see how his grace will help you believe even more. Amen. Now together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begot not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He has sent into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I like look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace. Let us offer our prayers for the, our human family. That the Catholic Church may grow through continual proclamation of Christ's victory over sin and death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the divine mercy of Jesus may change the hearts and minds of people filled with hatred and conflict, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who doubt may find faith in the one who was dead and now lives forever, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That with Thomas we may worship Jesus in the Eucharist with the words, My Lord and my God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed may rise to share the glorious life of their risen Savior. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father all merciful, in his own body your son rose to new life. Accept the prayers we make in his name, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
Pray, my brothers and my sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and in all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblation of your people and those who you have brought to new birth, that renewed by the confessing of your name by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, inform the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress to wait the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. On behalf of the people of Christ the King Parish in Liverpool, may you have a blessed Divine Mercy Sunday, and may we live out the life of Christ each and every day in our hearts. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to be God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.